Good morning, folks. Not much is happening on the sun right now, but we've got lots to discuss anyway. Gonna need you to wake up fast and get those ears open. We're going to begin, as always, with spaceweathernews.com to find that calm 24 hours on the sun. Not much happening but the departure of large coronal holes. The solar flaring has been pitiful, and without sunspots, that is very unlikely to change today. The solar wind, however, is showing slight rising density and a phi angle shift in blue, which could be the beginning of the sector boundary that brings the next stream of coronal particles. Remember, it is set to impact in the coming day with a few small CMEs, eyes on the KP index. Now, while we wait the last portion of the large coronal hole faced Earth yesterday, and we got one last uptick surge in seismicity. Top quakes of the last day both hit six range, one in Papua New Guinea, and the other hitting mid-ocean on the northern mid-Atlantic ridge. Top news. The new head of TEPCO said his predecessor's restriction of the word meltdown was tantamount to a cover-up that delayed the process of identifying and remedying the nuclear incident. We have an amazing article out about the Caribbean whereby bottom sea sloshing creates energetic signals that can be heard from space. The more interesting bit is that it is an official 120-day Earth cycle that should be new to just about every one of you hearing it. Wonder if it affects tides and quakes. Enceladus tipping his hat to star water as its southern crust is likely quite thin, leaving the subsurface ocean nearer to the surface than anyone could have imagined. But it was second best on that front, however, as researchers at Brown say that Pluto has a subsurface ocean. I can already hear the whispers among observers that You've heard that before. Indeed, three years ago in the Star Water series when we also speculated that life could exist there in its underground ocean, which was also very likely to exist. The worst weather in the world the past day hit Japan. That area rocked by quakes earlier this year has just seen terrible landslides as a low in convergence crossed the region, dumping tremendous amounts of rainfall. For those who watch us at earthchanges.org or who know about the Disaster Prediction app, our reward surveys went out yesterday, so please check the email you used on Kickstarter when you donated. You'll need to get us your phone number so you can download the app, and also your address and other info so we can send the gifts if you chose them. Half the people got their surveys in on day one. Let's see if we can get the rest today if possible. Also, folks, there are less than 25 VIP tickets left for Observing the Frontier 2017. That is happening quickly. Plenty of general admissions still available, though, and registration is open at suspiciousobservers.org. And I am proud to announce today that Dr. Michael Claridge has confirmed that he will present at the conference, and that kind of takes us up another notch, doesn't it? I'll be circling the Earth spots of note with my cursor, driving the worst weather over the coming hours. Midwest, U.S., New Zealand, northern France, and Germany, all with reason to pay attention. Lots going on here, folks, and I still haven't heard a word back on our challenge to the U.S. government, Space Weather News versus the USGS. It's 3.30 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.